he doesn't want the fight? If it don't happen in the time frame you said, is it because he don't want it? And then if that's a yes, then do you look at him a little differently as giving him this spot? Yes. Teddy, you put it, you you put it, you put it, you framed it really well. If he does not fight him by September next year, it means he doesn't want the fight. This year. Uh, this year. Yeah, we're already in 2024. Excuse me. Yeah. If he doesn't fight him this year in September, it means he doesn't want the fight. And every great Mexican goes out and they fight the guys. I mean, Chavez fought De La Hoya twice. 100%. Again, you, 100%. And it never knocks their career to lose to the next guy. So I, I really want him to fight Benavides, whether he wins or loses. I think, it, I think it's good for the sport. I think it's important. And I don't think it hurts his legacy if he does lose. In fact, I think it helps him. If he goes out on, a, on a, even a loss to Benavides, I think it actually helps his career. Welcome, fight fans, to Who's the Man here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I'm George DiMatellis in studio with Pauli Malinaji and Chris Algieri. And we have Teddy Atlas and George Jakovic to talk about who's the man at 168. All right, George, let's get into it. This should be good. All right, 168, where Canelo Alvarez rules. He is undisputed. We got a super middleweight fight this weekend. Jaime Munguia takes on John Ryder. These gentlemen here are going to give us their top three. We just do the elite three in the 168-pound division. And the cool thing about this list is there's no unanimous picks. We're going to keep you in suspense. We're going to start with the third pick. And uh, Chris, let's actually let's start with Teddy and Paulie because you agree your number three is the unbeaten Cuban sensation, David Morrell. Teddy, why do you have David Morrell at number three? He's unbeaten. <laughs> that was one of the reasons. <laughs> Look, he tremendous amateur, great pedigree. Uh, you know, after 300 amateur fights, you better be pretty good. Uh, or whatever whatever the number is, actually, that he comes from that great national Cuban team uh, that does produce all the gold medals and all the best amateurs that often make uh, champion pros when they come over here. Um, he, he's got the size. He, he shows the skill sets. I mean... He passes the eye test. You know, it, I don't care if he's got eight fights or 800 fights. Uh, I, can he fight? You know, he can fight. He can punch. He can fight. He's calm in the ring. He, you know, he, he looks like he's got qualities to be special. You know, he's won a title at such a quick pace, you know, which is right on par with some really special guys like Lomachenko and Rigondeaux and, you know, those kind of guys. And they... The history has shown that uh, they they lived up, you know, they they lived up to those expectations when they won titles that quick, that fast. So I he deserves to be there, I believe, because of that, because of his talent, because of what he's shown. And I know people say, well, Teddy, he's only nine and all eight knockouts. You know, he hasn't fought the ilk, the level that these other guys have. I know. I get it. That's where my eye comes in, I hope. my um, Just like these other two champions, where our judgment, our experience comes in that we can foresee that we believe they are the real deal, that they are going to be able to carry that kind of talent and promise when they step up to those levels. I remember I caught hell when I put Lomachenko on the pound for pound, ESPN's pound for pound <laughs> list. Uh, ten, you know, the ten best in the world. I put him on there after two fights, and people were going nuts. They were saying, "You can't do that." Well, I just did it. Well, well, <laughs> I, how I, how could you justify it? Well, I'm gonna justify it. I guess time will tell, but I'm gonna hopefully it'll be justified that my judgment was right. That watching fights, training fighters, being a fighter for all these decades of time that it actually means something. It actually means that when I look at something uh, in boxing, I actually might have a chance of knowing what the hell I'm looking at and projecting forward what the heck it's going to be. So uh, that's, you know, for me, that's, a, that's it. In the end of the day, you're not always right, but I believe that when, you, when you're going and you're counting on things that are reliable to count on, for your judgment, usually you wind up in the right place. So for me, David Morrell belongs at number three. All right, Paulie, you agree with Teddy. Tell us why. Well, 
because he's not four and he's not two and he's not one. So he's that's still. a good answer. All right. <laughs> that's for starters, you know. That's but, uh, good. That's, but, that's good. But I, but I, I think that you know he's not quite ahead of the he's not he's not quite ahead of the uh, the first two guys. Um, but uh, he's again all the reasons Teddy mentioned. Uh, you know, he passes the eye test. He's he's very very good uh, in in a lot of ways. He's uh, he's sharp. Uh, he's he got a, a high ring IQ. Uh, the the boxing experience he has uh, from that Cuban amateur system, and then you know you can, it clearly translates when he comes to the pros. And we see a lot of these new age Cuban fighters are you know they're not f so much fighting for the point system because you know ever since the computer scoring system eliminated uh, was eliminated in the amateurs, you see a more aggressive type of Cuban. You see a more professional style type of Cuban, and that's what. I think Morel has, and that's why he's, you're able to, Teddy, that's why you're able to put him at such a high point uh, if there's such, uh, such little uh, professional experience because you can already tell he's kind of made in his style and he only continues to get better. Uh, uh, I spoke to and Bob Santos. The level Santos. of fighters, Paulie, you know that. Yeah. The level of fighters that these guys have already yeah. fought. Yeah. You know, in the amateurs, a lot of people don't realize yeah. they already fought internationally a level of fighter that most of these guys that are being built up haven't even fought yet. Yeah, I know absolutely. it's I know it's only three rounds. I get it, but the quality is mm -hmm. higher. Yeah, and, and I, I spoke to Bob Santos who works with him, and he was like saying, like, "Yo, it's, it's hard to get opponents for this guy. You know, he's he's gonna beat all of them. He's gonna beat every single one of these guys. It's just a matter of getting in the ring with him." And he, you can kind of tell because, to a degree, you can see that you know Benavides is playing the same game with Morel that Canelo is playing with Benavides, like basically trying to downplay him a little bit, and uh, you know just look into uh, uh, another direction. And that's what happens. Here's what you know. I know what happens in professional boxing. This was this is the kind of the, the core of why fights don't get made. When you got a really popular fighter that can, you know, command all the money, he can, he now has everything to lose because he has, commands all the money. So he actually will pick top guys at the moment he wants to fight them. Maybe when they're not at their best or, uh, you know, sort of like the Mayweather route, the Canelo route. But they all do the same thing. You know what I mean? Like Oscar De La Hoya didn't fight Fernando Vargas until he, Fernando Vargas had kind of been half ruined by Felix Trinidad, right? So, you know, you, you kind of see that all the time. Uh, where the, a guy commands so much money that he doesn't want to, he wants to fight top guys to make it respectable, but he doesn't want to fight the man of, uh, at, at, at that moment uh, because it's never worth it because he commands all the money. So he'll kind of like fa fa face the next best or the third best or the fourth best, which is still a respectable fight, but it's not the fight everybody wants to see. Then you have the other side of it. The, the other side of it where the guys are so good, but they're not super popular. Uh, at, but they're just average popularity or not popular at all. So you get guys like the Golovkins in his prime. Now you have Benavidez, a uh, Morel. Again, guys who are popular within boxing, they don't have that super crossover appeal. And those kind of guys end up not being able to get the fights. Those kind of guys are typically avoided till it's more convenient for the, the money guy or the star guy or just people in general, you know, because they're, they're, uh, uh, they're bringing too much danger. And so you, those kind of guys, uh, even Dimitri Sandre was like that to a degree uh, uh, earlier in his career. So you end up seeing people criticized them, like, oh, look at his resume. I can, I've had this argument a million times I've, in, in terms of going back to when Dimitris, Dimitris Andre was being uh, avoided uh, earlier in his career by a lot of guys. I just felt like, you know, you know people are comparing resume or Golovkin or comparing resumes. Like, oh, who did he fight, bro? When these guys are that good, no money guy's going to touch them. No money guy's going to go near them. They, they don't want nothing to do with it unless it's forced. Unless it's forced. And that's what turns people off because nobody forces it. Everybody wants to keep the money guy, the money train rolling on the money guy, and they won't force it this way. And um, I think Morel is third right now because that it's not so much that he's – in a typical weight class, he might be number one, but this is a very deep weight class. It's a very good weight class. So I got Morel at three. All right, Chris, you got the former champ, Caleb Plant at number three. Yeah, as much as, much as there's so much boxing IQ in, in these four boxes that you guys are looking at at home – um, it's good sometimes that we don't agree on everything because this would be a much more boring show. So now I got I got Caleb Plant. So so for me to defend my choice of Caleb Plant at number three, I'm going to talk about David Morrell as well because he is that good. And I I, I agree with everything that you said, Teddy and and Paulie Champ. Um, he passes the eye test. He passes the sniff test. I think he's going to be a problem in the division for a long time. He might even own this division at some point soon. But for me, he just hasn't done enough yet, whereas Caleb Plant has been in with the top guys. Caleb Plant's been, been in with the guys that are going to end up being one and number two in this weight class already. And a thing about Caleb Plant, he's getting better off, those, off these losses. After the Canelo, the, the, the Caleb Plant that fought Benavides was much better than the, the Caleb Plant who fought Canelo Alvarez. So I'm curious to see Caleb back after the fight that he had with Benavides, in which he was doing really well early on. He showed his class. 
But Benavides is a monster. This is the reason that that's his nickname. He's the Mexican monster for a reason. Um, and I thought Caleb Plant uh, uh, fought well in that fight. I, I think he's got a lot of fight left in him. And just based on what he's done in the past and the fact that I do see him improving, I still have him holding on strong to number three. Although Morel is 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 really just nipping nipping at his coattails at this point. And very easily, I could have him at number three. But again, like I said, we, we, this would be a less interesting conversation if I just agree with you guys all the time. So I got Caleb Plant number three. I think he's super talented. I think he still has a lot left in the tank. And uh, not for nothing, I, I actually think he's he's getting better. So the, the next version, the next time we see Caleb Plant, he might be better than the old version, which is what I what I think. So I got him at number three. Well, Chris, it's gonna it's about to get very interesting because we're moving to the number two picks. And this is going to get a lot of comments. I can't wait for this. You see it on the screen. We're going to start with you, Teddy. You've got the undisputed champ at 168, number two in your who's the man list. Canelo Alvarez, Teddy, is your number two. Talk about that. I just wanted to give the you know his army, his legion of fans out there, and him himself another reason to you know to hate me. That I mean that that is my main reason. I'm only kidding. Um, a lot of people say, "Oh yeah, see, we knew it. We knew that he was a hater." We knew. Um, no, I mean obviously this will give them a few more logs to put on the fire, you know, to burn up Teddy Atlas. Um, that oh he he doesn't like Mexicans uh, actually um, I I love Mexicans um, but uh, he he just hates Canelo and he's a hater but um, no I obviously Canelo easily could be the number one pick but he's got two losses two draws you know when a guy who is uh, as Chris was alluding, as as Paulie was alluding to, the the fighter that has the power, the fighter that has the drawing power, the pay per view power, you know, the guy that lays the golden eggs when he's got when he's got all of that. Usually, when he's got two draws, you could usually figure that means two losses. <laughs> you, you know, uh, like my metric system or don't like my metric system. That is the metric system of boxing. A guy of that kind of esteem, that kind of power that brings in that kind of money, that has those kind of connections, yeah, usually that's the case. Uh, a draw is a loss. So you could easily say Canelo's 59-4. and four. Does that change things? Look, he's a terrific fighter. He's moved up and down in weight classes. Um, he, he turned pro when he was 16. It's amazing when you think about how long he's been around and he's still not too old yet. That, that is amazing. Um, and with, with all the, you know, with all the miles on the abdominer, um, but he's not used up. Why? Because he's good. Because usually he does the using up. Uh, it's not done on him. But I just think that if a guy hasn't lost yet in Benavides, that there is no telling of how good he still can be. The same thing with Canelo up to that point. And and listen, Chris makes a beautiful point. You can lose, you can still get better. Yeah, I get it. That ain't happening with Canelo at this point in his life, though. That's different. Plant, different. Canelo ain't getting better from losses. So... Better Vaders has a chance to continue growing, to continue getting bigger, better. And he's naturally the bigger guy, naturally the stronger guy. Although, you know, some people argue with me that Canelo with that special weight program and maybe the Mexican beef diet that he's on <laughs> down there. I don't know. I'm not uh, I'm not going anywhere. Say I'm just I'm only going places I can go. That that is documented places. And maybe with that, maybe he does match even a guy who's extraordinarily big and strong, Benavides, in the strength department. I don't know. I'm going to say Benavides is bigger, stronger. I'm going to say he's still developing. Um, I'm going to say that right now at 27 and 0, that he belongs ahead of Canelo. That that Canelo, you know, that Canelo has lost the privilege of that spot um, with the way that I've just broken it down. And one other last thing, that he doesn't have to, maybe I'm being very fair about it, he doesn't have to get in there with 
whoever we perceive as the top guy, obviously I let the cat out of the bag in my thoughts um, in justifying why I have Canelo number two. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry about that. But, you know, Canelo, Can, Canelo doesn't want to, he doesn't, He's got the ability because of what Paulie touched on. He is the man. He is the money man. He has the ability to avoid guys. And, and Paulie said it beautifully. Like some guys wait until like Oscar might have waited until, you know, until uh, Vargas was a little damaged. We've seen it. You know, some people say that about Floyd. They say it about different guys. That maybe they just waited uh, because they had the ability the privilege to wait until the guy was just a little bit off. And Canelo has that ability where he's, he, he can wait to guys are just a little diminished. He did that with triple G. I thought that he still lost those first two fights. I'm sorry. I'm upsetting the, the great, great Mexican fans, Canelo fans again. I'm sorry. I don't mean to upset your day. Really? I don't, but you know, and then and then he waited. He waited to <laughs> until Triple G became a grandfather, and then he fought him the third time. And what happened in that fight? Maybe he had an off night, but you know what? To be number one, he should have stopped. Almost came close to. He should have dominated more than he did in that third fight with really an old. I love Triple G, but an old Triple G. He's a, an OG. Well, let's just say that's cool. That that works. An OG. He was he he should have really <laughs> dominated more with that OG. He was so old and, he lost and, a G. He became double G. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for my man to come in there and you know and add to it. And uh, look, I got him number two. All joking aside, it's nothing personal. You know, Paulie, the Godfather. You know, it's it's not personal. It's business. This is not personal, it's business for all the reasons that I just pointed out. And I'll finish on the on the point I was saying is that he might be avoiding Benitez, uh, Benavides. I'm not saying he is, but again, he has the ability to wait, to, to fight other guys and still get paid, you know, big money where other guys don't have that privilege, that ability always to do that. He does, where a Benavides is ready to fight him. Where, you know, and, and for different reasons, but still, at the end of the day, ready to fight him. Canelo's not. So for all the myriad of all those reasons that I just pointed out, and he's getting older. I think he's sliding a little bit. I think that, although he looked terrific in his last fight, I'll give you that. He looked, but the couple of fights before that, he didn't look as terrific. And when you start getting older and you're up there over 60 fights, guess what? You are going to slide. There's a possibility of sliding a little bit so with all of that with maybe a little erosion in canelo maybe that's the fair way to say it i'm gonna put him number two all right paulie and chris you guys agree david benavidez is number two on this list and canelo is number two as well according to mr teddy atlas paulie benavidez at number two yeah i um I think I, I've, I've mentioned this back when uh, Haney was a lightweight champion. I, I, I think I have to respect the, the championship. So, I, you know, I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag as to why Benavides is not my number one. I think head-to-head -head he probably matches up very, very well with Canelo. Um, Teddy is uh, kinder with words. Uh, you know, he calls them great fans. The, the Canelo blowhards are great fans and all this stuff. It, Bro, if you're a full-blown adult and you're a blowhard for any other human being, you're not going to get a respect out of me, bro. I, I can care less if I offend you. You know, you're, you're lesser than a human being to me once you're a blowhard. But, 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 but having said that... I never left out there in Jupiter yeah. like I can be with a lot of other people <laughs> when I would be. Thank you. I love you guys. Love, love you, Teddy. I'm here. We're here for you. But I'll we tell you what. Back. We got your back. I, I'll tell you what. You know, as Chris said in, the, um, in, in, in earlier, you know, also, the show wouldn't be interesting if we all agreed, right? I mean, if you guys, we didn't get under your, uh, t touch on your heartstrings a little bit at home, you know, you, you might, guys might get bored. You know some of you, some of you tune in just to hear my opinions, you know, or hear Teddy's opinion, just so you can get mad, you know what I mean? So, what am I going to do, bro? We bring, they, we, the, the, the great producers, they bring up subject matters and to, onto the shows where they know certain opinions aren't going to fly the same way. And you know what? You get debates and you get things like this. I got Benavides as my number two. Though, nonetheless, I still have Canelo as my number one, and we can go into that later. Obviously, the cat's out of the bag as to why, why uh, Benavides is number two is because he doesn't have the titles. 
Um, so I'll go into more of the Canelo stuff when it comes to Canelo, the time to talk about number one. As far as Benavidez, I think he's been not only phenomenal, he's getting better, he's, he's getting more and more impressive. He's, um, he's just a, a, a monster in every way. You know, he, he's got that nickname, and, and it's starting to apply more and more and more. He's just had a dominant year uh, where he's probably the one of the high contenders for fighter of the year in 2023, wins over Caleb Plant and Demetrius Andrade, which are two phenomenal wins over two phenomenal fighters. Um, I think the way he did that, and not just in getting those wins, and the yeah. way he got those wins is really what solidifies him as such a strong candidate here, you know, and, and what puts him ahead of Morel as well, because again, he's undefeated, Morel's undefeated, but he just has that body of work a little bit more just based on professional experience. But I think Morel and Benavides would also be head-to-head, -head, a monster matchup. Uh, but I, I got right now, I got Benavides strongly based on this 20, 2023. He is, he's got a lot of momentum flying towards number one. And uh, we'll get into, I'll get into the, the whole scenario and situation with that. And I'll talk a little bit more on your heartstrings, blowhards, when we talk about number one. Well, Chris, before you get to Benavides, can you remind everyone who's the man is not about belts, it's not about titles, it's who kicks whose ass. You said that many times. Man, you, you took my, That's the what this right list is based hey, on, right? don't, 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 don't start, George, because if it's about that, I'm going to start changing my list right now. Don't start. <laughs> don't go there. That's I have what, to respect the world championships. That's what this list is about. I'm respecting the who's world championships. Who's the man? I'm respecting the world the champ? championships. Go ahead. George, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, you know, who, who's the man? That's about who kicks whose ass. And I, listen, I'm splitting hairs between one and two and three and four. So three and four, like I said, I had Plant and I had, I had, I had Morel. Um, I, I think Plant still has enough to get past him based on experience, whatever. That's why I got them three and four. But again, very, very, very close. But I think there's a big gap between three and two. And David Benavides is at number two. He kicked Caleb Plant's ass. So he's, he's going to be higher than him. Now, in terms of what's going to happen with number two and number one, obviously, I think the cat's out of the bag once again with who my number one is as well. Um, but, man, David Benavidez, he is a monster, just like we've been saying. I, I'm a huge fan of his. He's been on our show. He's a great kid. His, his, his father's a great trainer. Um, and his body of work, especially recently, is, is tip-top. And he's only getting better all the time. And the longer it takes for us to make this or that matchup to happen, if it is to happen, the Canelo Benavides fight, the worse it is for Canelo. Canelo, he's an old 32 or 33, however old he is, because he started fighting at 15 years old as a pro. He's had a long career. And although he hasn't taken a lot of damage, it doesn't matter. The training camps, fights, careers, uh, you know, 50, 60 mm -hmm. fights, it, it adds up. I don't care who you are, I don't care how good your defense is. Um, and although his defense has gotten a lot better over the years, he hasn't taken a lot of – he hasn't been in really grueling fights in that way. It doesn't matter. Camps camps wear on you, um, and not only physically but mentally. Um, and I, I think that the longer this fight takes to happen, the, the more it benefits Benavidez. And I do believe Benavidez is going to be the top of this division very, very soon. But I'm as close to a Canelo with bubble hard on this show as you're going to get. I, I'm a big fan of Canelo. I have been for a really long time. I've, I've watched his career progress and his abilities change. His style has changed. He's another guy who's been learning on the job, um, even, even late in his, his pro career, even being the top of the sport in terms of the moneymaker. Uh, the guy is, has, has learned new tricks, and that, that's, always very, that's always impressed me. And uh, I, I still think if, they, if they, they match up, even though David Benavidez matches up great with Canelo, stylistically I think it's a really good fight for, for Benavidez in terms of the way that, that – He's able to put pressure and, and build as the fight goes on and throw so, combi so, so much combination of punches. Doesn't allow his guy to reset or to, to set up or to counter, um, which would all benefit Benavidez against a guy like Canelo who needs to set the pace and counter from the outside. Uh, I, I think Canelo has enough at this point, maybe, to pull out one more big win, but it's got to happen soon. And if it doesn't, I'm, I'm, David Benavidez is going to take my number one. Uh, but for right now, that's why I have uh, Be Benavidez at number two, just, just below number one. Because I do think he is that good for everything that you guys were saying. Well, you guys pretty much gave away your number one picks, which really wasn't a surprise. Um, Paulie, though, I want to start with you because you, you and Chris have Canelo at number one. And uh, Teddy has David Benavidez at number one. Paulie, Canelo is your top guy who's the man at 168. Yeah, I mean, resume um, is big. Uh, the undisputed super middleweight champion. I mean, for me, that makes him number one. You, you, I'm not going to disrespect the fact the undisputed title that way. I do feel, uh, do disagree with Teddy where he said that Canelo has kind of earned the right to do what he wants. No, he, for me, he hasn't. When you have the champion, when you don't have the championships, you can do whatever you want, even if you're popular. But when you have the championships, it is your job to, uh, and it is the job of the sanctioning bodies to enforce mandatories and enforce these top fights because you can't, 
put a stranglehold on the titles and not let the next best contenders get shots at the world titles. Four years. Four years. Because some guys' primes are actually just a year or two. So, so four years to do this. So, yeah, that, that, is, that is almost criminal. You know? So when, you, when we're at a point where this is happening and then we disguise it as chasing greatness in another weight class or doing this or doing that or, or the rumors now, which are you know, not true because you, you're not, you're not, you haven't heard the last of this if this is true, him fighting Jamal Charlo in May. Yeah, I let's mean, not even get yeah, into that. You know, so, oh. so I mean, and, and while top, top contenders are not getting title shots, some of the best top contenders in a weight class that makes them some of the best fighters in the world overall are not getting title shots, then it becomes problematic. But having said that, right now I got him as number one. He's the undisputed super middleweight champion. Uh, his body of work resume has, 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 you know, he's fought a lot of top guys, be it that whatever you want to say about when he fought them, he still fought them at a, at a close enough level to their prime. I'll tell you what, my top Canelo is probably the one that beat Saunders, Plant, yeah. even the rematch with GGG, where I still thought he came up short, but he fought a really good fight. Like, that was a good fight, and that was a, a try. I, I, I still think he came up short, but it was a fighter that really was, was, had, had the goal in his mind to get it. You know what I mean? And he, and he was fighting very, very well, nonetheless. Uh, again, the one that beat Plant, the one that beat Saunders. That Canelo right there, man, I put that guy in against anybody. And, and again, I even thought that Canelo lost to Golovkin. But, man, it's a, it's, it, it's a guy who's worth your money. He's worth your money. The Canelo against Charlo, that, the opponent wasn't worth the money, so you can't really tell what he's doing. You know what I mean? The Canelo, the Canelo of recent, I don't know if he's worth your money. You know what I mean? Like, and, of course, some of it is to do with he's had a long career and it's the end of his career. But I'm going to touch on that, too, as well. I don't think it counts as you're, you're, you've had a long career, you're fading because you turned pro when you're 15, when you were fighting cab drivers when you were 15. Guys who stay in the amateurs at a world-class level are fighting world. You ever watch a world-level tournament in the amateurs of 15, 16-year-olds? You ever watch that? That is way, way, way more difficult than fighting cab drivers at 15 years old. Way more difficult. I mean, that is not even co comparable, actually. You know, and you're fighting every single day. You win, you advance. Your reward for advancing, for winning, is you're fighting another guy on that high of a level the next day and the next day until you're eliminated. And you do those, and you do those kinds of tournaments at, when you're when you're on a high level at, as a 15, 16 year old and moving up. Okay, so the for me, guys like Usyk and Lomachenko have had a longer career than than like a Canelo, for example. So I don't know if the whole long career thing is gonna really hold up as much, in, in my opinion. But he's made a lot of money, and he's done a lot. He's accomplished a lot. And I think sometimes that makes you a little bit less hungry and a little bit less determined. And he, again, I think respectably, he's allowed to do a lot of that as long as he's not holding the title hostages. And because, you know, he's earned the right to do that as long as he's not holding the title hostages, uh, the, titles host the titles hostage. Um, but having said that, I mean, you also can't, expect us to sit there praising him as the number one top guy. I have got him as the number one top guy because of the reasons I mentioned. But it's, it's in an, almost in an unpraiseworthy manner because, you know, you can do whatever you want. And that's fine. But you also can't expect the people that know what they're watching to say, oh, you know what? You know, he's avoiding that guy, but it's because of this. Because at, at a certain point, when he keeps doing it, the, the, the excuses become tiring, you know, and, and, and become obvious. You know, no matter how many blowhards out there get made, you know you're lying to yourself on deep inside, you know? So, you know, ultimately, he's number one. He's the undisputed champion. He's, he's accomplished a lot. At his best, I liked him. I, I, I think he was a, a fun fighter to watch. But even at his best, I don't think he was the top guy. I think Golovkin beat him. But nonetheless, I think he, he has been one of the more popular and top and exciting fighters. And, and, and that's not always something that, that can go hand in hand. Mayweather was very, very popular, but he, he didn't really give you mind-stopping fights, right? Canelo will give you that in, in certain points in his career, you know? And I, and I think that's, that's uh, commendable to him. And uh, I think that's all a part of a reason why fans love him. But, but right now, I got him number one, but he's, he's fading out. I mean, it just, it's a matter of the sanctioning bodies just having the respectability within themselves, which, I mean, let's face it, I mean, a lot of times they won't. But if, if, if they strip him and Benavides picks up one title, Benavides becomes number one in my book. Well, Chris, he, he's fading out according to, to Paulie. Oh, and one more. Still, you were number oh, one. I got one more. I got one more. Can I add just one more? Uh, a, a, a curtain call. Teddy, you mentioned, though, Mexican beef possibilities and all this other stuff. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> At this level, there's a lot of Mexican beef going on. So, you know, yeah. I, I'm not defending Canelo. But there's Mexican we're, beef, there's we're British beef. We're, there's we're, we're, we're talking about these, we're talking about these levels. These are talking about these levels. There's allegedly a lot of Mexican beef going around the menu. A lot for a lot of guys. 
No, 100%. It's rampant through the sport. Yep. See, that's what I love about you guys. That's what I love about Paulie. Uh, and, you know, with the movie reference, I, I'm sorry. While you were talking, <laughs> I couldn't help it. No. You know, James Carey. You're James Carey in that movie, Liar, Liar, when they Jim put Carrey. a spell Jim on him. Where he, <laughs> and he, where he couldn't stop. lie. He, he went he for couldn't James lie. Carey. He, he would try to say, you know, a little... And and then he would wind up telling the truth, even if it got him in trouble. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> New York is. Well, listen, we 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 have to wrap this up. I want to give Chris and Teddy your your brief. We are we already know your picks, but Chris, the fading Canelo, he kicks everyone's ass at one sixty eight. So right, Teddy, you said you you love Mexicans. I love Mexicans too. It's one of my favorite dishes is uh, tacos de lengua, ta tongue taco. So uh, I don't know if that gives you any extra extra power being a being a Mexican eating tongue tacos, but maybe maybe that gives them, that's where Canelo gets that strength from. But um, no, okay, Canelo, right. listen, Canelo's body of work is 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 incredible, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree, Paulie, with the with the amateur thing. Yeah, absolutely, that's that's hard. But the the, the main way of the fight was ten years ago. Like that's crazy. He's been fighting at a high level for ten years. That takes it out of that takes it out of anybody. Listen, every great fighter closes their career with subpar performances. I don't care who you are. Everybody comes in. They, they, well, you fight way too long because the money's there. You keep fighting. Uh, uh, Manny Pacquiao lost to Ugas. Manny Pacquiao is, is an all-time great. Um, you know, he, he underperformed in that fight. Oscar De La Hoya went out against Pacquiao. Everyone does that except for Floyd, obviously. But Floyd wasn't fighting the tip-top guy at the, at the very end of his career either. So, yes, are we seeing the twilight of Canelo's very long and illustrious career? Absolutely. Can he still fight at a high level? Absolutely. And I think he's got one more, like I said. So I, that, that's why I have him edging David Benavides. But listen, six months from now, if they don't fight, I got a big problem. If they don't fight this year, there's a big problem. And I'm going to have David Morrell taking, taking Canelo over. Because at that point, like I keep saying, the longer this fight takes to make, it takes to let me make, ask you a quick question. I'm going to lean fight towards Morrell. Uh, within that time frame, Benavides. let me ask you a question. If they don't fight, and this is, a, this, I think this is relative a little bit relevant to what I was saying about sometimes him 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 avoiding him him avoiding guys where if if they don't fight within that time frame, is it because Canelo just don't want to fight him? Because then he's just gonna, you know, protect his legacy for what it is now, because he's got all the money in the world. You don't need another big payday, let's be honest. So not that no, anyone's gonna push money away, but I'm just saying is, is it on purpose that he doesn't want the fight? If it don't happen in the time frame you said, is it because he don't want it? And then if that's a yes, then do you look at him a little differently as giving him this spot? Yes. Teddy, you put it, you, you put it, you put it, you framed it really well. If he does not fight him by September next year, it means he doesn't want the fight. This year. Uh, this year. Yeah, we're already in 2024. Excuse me. Yeah. If he doesn't fight him this year in September, it means he doesn't want the fight. And every great Mexican goes out and they fight the guys. I mean, Chavez fought De La Hoya twice. 100%. You, 100%. And it never knocks their career to lose to the next guy. So I, I really want him to fight Benavides, whether he wins or loses. I think, it, I think it's good for the sport. I think it's important. And I don't think it hurts his legacy if he does lose. In fact, I think it helps him. If he goes out on, a, on a, even a loss to Benavides, I think it actually helps his career. Well, we're going to revisit this in about six months, but we're, we're out of time. Going to throw back to you, George. But let it start. Teddy Atlas has David Benavides and not Canelo. As number one, who's the man at 168 pounds? George, that's all we got. This discussion is to be continued. Yes, sir. And it certainly will be continued in the comments section, for sure, on ProBox TV and on the YouTube channel. Looking forward to that. Don't forget, official online betting sponsor of Wednesday Night Fights, ProBox TV, is sportsbetting.ag. Thank you for watching Who's the Man here on ProBox TV, your boxing channel.